بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Greetings everyone This is Omar Balfiki and I'm so excited to welcome you to the second episode of Inspired by Games If you haven't watched the first episode I'll leave the link somewhere here and also in the description So if you haven't watched it The series is about taking an interesting feature from our beloved games and then trying to imitate that feature for the sake of learning. And I believe that reverse engineering is one of the best ways of learning. The first episode was God of War. We imitated the acts of Kratos and today we're taking Red Dead Redemption. And the feature we're going to implement is the Dead Eye system. So this is the end result. Simply just a left click button will shoot. And then if we hold the right mouse button, it takes us to the dead eye system. And each left click will assign a target for it. Once we release the right mouse button, it will start shooting these targets. It's pretty cool. I'm so excited to finally share this tutorial with you guys. All right, I hope you're excited and let's get started. We go to scenes, sorry, we go to scenes and then setup scene by the way all of this is uploaded into my github account so you can just go there and download it and you will see both the setup scene and the final scene and i did that because today we're just focusing on the aiming system and the post processing which is the color and the feel of the dead eye mode we're not going to focus on the gun much so there's no physics with the gun or damaging if you want me to create a tutorial about that then let me know i'll be more than excited to do it all right this is the setup scene where we have these few buildings which gives the look of a cowboy town and then here we just have a few crates and our magnum here all of these i got them from the asset store here is the main camera which is the player we just have the camera look script on it and then the dead eye system script so double click to open it it's empty the first thing we're going to create is the three different states of the dead eye so first we have when it's off we're out of that mode and then we're in the aiming state and finally the shooting state so i'm going to use a variable of type enum public enum dead eye state and then we're going to type it here off aiming and finally shooting now let's create an instance of the did i state so did i state equals off now let's go to the update method in here where we're going to do the three different states of the did i first when we hold the right mouse button we're going to enter the dead eye mode. If you click LMB, which is the left mouse button, while dead eye mode, we're going to assign target. Else, simply we're just going to shoot because we're not in the dead eye mode. And finally, release right mouse button, enter shooting state, then exit. Okay, so that's basically how it works. Hold the right mouse button to enter the did I mode where the colors happened in the slow motion and everything and then if we click the left mouse button we're gonna assign targets once we release the right mouse button we're gonna enter to the shooting state here we're gonna check if input get button fire 2 which is the right mouse button we're gonna check if did I state is off then we're gonna change it to aiming and then here we're gonna check again if input dot get button down fire one which is the left mouse button we're gonna check if did i state is off we're simply gonna fire it's not defined so let's create it here private void fire and for now we're just gonna print fire we're gonna get back here and we're gonna check again if did i state is in aiming mode sign target We'll be back in a second here. Once we release the right mouse button, so if input dot get button up fire two, we'll check if did I state is in aiming mode. We will go to shooting mode. Now let's do the target assigning. First, we'll need a variable that stores all the targets in it. So we'll create a list of transforms. Let's call it targets. 
So we'll come here and let's create a raycast hit variable, call it hit. And then we're going to use the raycast method under physics dot raycast which is a method to create a ray and checks if it hits something or not so the origin of that ray is our current position and the direction would be transform dot transform direction vector three dot forward then we're going to store that information into our hit variable and the max distance let's say 100 here we've touched an object what we will do is create a game object let's call it temporary target equals new game object and that temporary target dot transform dot position will equals the hit dot point so whatever target we hit we will get that position of it as a vector 3 and then we will assign it to the temporary target after that the temporary target dot parent will be equals to the target we hit we will create a temporary target and then we will update its position to the hit point and after that we will make it a child of that object so if that object is moving the target will follow it and one more step is adding it to the list of targets so targets dot add the target is a game object so we will get its transform to store it there and now we've assigned a new target let's save it go back Okay, so if I hit play, as you can see here, the targets are zero and the dead eye state is off. So let's hold the right mouse button. It's changed to aiming. If I release it, it goes to shooting, but it doesn't update. Okay, let's try adding targets. So right click, now we're in aiming mode and left click, left click, left click. Okay, let's see these objects. You see, it's a child of that moving crate. The, uh, the other one is here. And uh, the third one is here. That's cool. And now let's start with the shooting progress. We will go to the fixed update. And let's just say update state. Okay, so let's create a function called update state where we're going to control shooting and the transition between these three different states we also need to turn off the camera controls so let's create a variable of the camera look let's call it cam underscore look here we will check if did i state is off we will enable it equals true else if the state is aiming mode cam look dot enabled is true as well and finally, else we're in the shooting state where we're gonna lock the camera. So it will be automated. So we're just gonna lock the player from controlling the camera by disabling the camera script. Else when it's shooting, then we're gonna update targets. Let's create another void, update targets. Here where we're gonna do all the rotations. So first of all, we will check if did I state is actually on shooting mode and our targets count is more than zero then we're valid to start doing the calculations let's create a temporary variable call it current target equals targets zero to get the first item on the list now we got the current target and now we want to look at the target and to do so we're going to create a quaternion variable let's call it rot equals quaternion dot look rotation and what it does you specify the distance between our target and us and then it will calculate the angle to look at the target so current target dot position minus our position now we're going to update the camera rotation to this new rotation but if we assigned rot directly to the current rotation it will change it instantly but we don't want that we want it to change gradually to have some sort of animation to it so we're going to use another quaternion function which is the slurp function the current rotation which is transform dot rotation and the target we want to reach is rod and then the speed let's say 30 degrees per second we just multiply it by delta time and now we're rotating to that target okay let's give it a shot the camera look we just drag the camera look here let's test it out 
So if I set this as a target, now it's looking at it. If I move it around, it will keep looking at it. But now we want it to move from this target to the next one. And once it's looking at it, it will fire and then goes to the next one and so on. I'm going to store the difference in um, a float variable, call it diff, and then transform dot Euler angles. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, minus the rod dot Euler angles dot magnitude. And then we will check if diff is less than or equals 0 0.1 because I don't want to compare if both of them they're exactly equals in some cases it will take time to reach to that exact point so let's give it almost equals each other with a difference of 0 0.1 if we reach to that point we're gonna fire and then we're gonna destroy the current target first remove it from our list targets up remove current target and after that we're going to destroy that game object current target dot game object because it's a transform so we're going to get the game object to destroy it save it and go back hit play and let's see what do we have hold right click and then left click at these targets okay that's cool now it's working we're just missing a few more things before the post processing what i'm gonna do is play an animation here and then play the sound of the gun so we go here and create a variable of type animator call it anim and then public audio source and call it shot sound effect and to play an animation we select our gun and you will see the animator here double click and we'll see shooting one and to get to that animation you have to trigger shot one which is this all right so i'm going to trigger it anim dot set trigger shot one and then shot sound effects dot play save it and go back let's add here audio source and go to sound effects you will find the gunshot simply drag it here uncheck the play on awake drag it here in the animator we're gonna drag the gun here let's try left click it shoots perfectly plays the animation with the sound so let's try to set targets okay that's cool one more thing you can add is setting a cool down because at the moment it keeps firing without any cool down let's say your gun takes longer to shoot um the, as you just saw now there's no cool down it just fires and you could see the overlap of the sound effects so we could just create another variable of type float let's call it cool down timer equals zero make it private and here we'll check if cooldown timer is greater than 0, 0.0 then cooldown timer minus equals time dot delta time else cooldown timer equals 0, 0.0 these few lines are the common lines for creating any timer basically if it's more than zero you just deduct one each second if it's less than zero you just reset it back to zero whenever we fire we set the cooldown timer to you want it one second two seconds let's say you want to fire two bullets per second so two divided by one let's simply type half and then we'll come here and check and cooldown timer is less than or equals zero let's go back hit play okay now that's way better now we're still in the shooting mode even if we finish so we just add an else statement here if the targets are finished or we're not in the shooting state we just change it to off here we just disable the deny system and one more thing to add is the slow motion so we go to update state if we're aiming then we will change the time dot time scale equals to let's say 0 0.3 floats 
First we change the time scale to 0.3 which slows things down and then we just update the fixed delta time to time scale multiplied by 0.02 and we just copy that place it here and here so when it's off we set it back to 1 and also when we're shooting we set it back to 1 save it go back to unity and hit play okay so right click it's pretty cool slow motion okay now we're left with the cross targets the small red cross and um, the post processing so to get the small cross we just go to textures and assets you'll find it here so what we're gonna do is add a new UI and then image simply we're just gonna drag the sprite here pretty big so let's go something like 0.5 or even 0.3 would be good and let's call it cross let's duplicate it a few times yeah five times and disable it save it and go back in here we're gonna create below targets public transform this time we're gonna use an array target cross and then here in the fixed update we will update targets UI and it's another function that we uh, we will create that is responsible for these guys so for integer i equals to zero i list the target cross dot length and then i plus plus first we'll check if i is less than targets dot count which means we're within the limit of the targets we have simply we will just say target cross i dot position equals camera dot main dot world to screen point we're going to convert the target point to a screen point for the ui so we're going to pass the current target dot position else we'll just disable the current cro uh, the current cross dot game object dot set active to false and once we use it we want to set it to true okay so if i is less than targets count let's say we s we have the five crosses at the moment right and what if we selected only three we don't want to exceed that three targets and the other two will be deactivated they will be disabled all right and if we're still within the first three we're going to enable it and change its position to the target convert it to the screen point save it and go back okay so in order to select all of them instead of dragging one by one because you know if you select more than one it will change to their inspector what we will do is go to the camera and then lock that inspector so now it, it won't change select these five crosses simply drag them here and then unlock it again save and hit play let's set a target okay that's so cool and now we're left with the last and the coolest step the post processing but first you want to make sure that post processing package is installed and to do so you go to window package manager and you'll see it here in my case it's installed so go to our camera here and add component post processing volume and then post processing layer and then change the layer to uh, post processing and also the layer here to post processing go back to the volume and change it to is global so it affects all the other objects and then here the profile you could select the one I created here but let's create a new one for this tutorial let's add an effect first thing we're gonna add color grading and before we start at the beginning I thought there was a mistake here or something was not working for me but I just figured out that you could just click it here and enable it it's confusing I know we're not gonna use that so the temperature we're gonna go a bit to the yellowish and the tint a bit to the left side or yeah a bit to the left side and then we'll go to saturation and desaturate it a little bit contrast maybe on a bit of contrast here and then go to the blue 
decrease it a bit to give us that yellowish effect you can play even more with it and then I'm gonna add bloom to give us the cool sun effect okay so first thing we're gonna enable the intensity and simply increase it with a bit of threshold and all of these other things you want to increase it even like that dreamer look you can do whatever you want and then finally we're gonna add the vignette so the mode is simply classic black and increase everything here increase intensity smoothness increase it a bit you can just play around as much as you want oh no this is sniper okay never mind and yeah one more thing the chromatic effect it's pretty cool look at that okay save it so if you hit play it's enabled but we want to enable and disable that as we go into and add from the dead eye state to control the effect you can go to the post process volume and just change the weight you see that's pretty cool so we're gonna play with that in our script okay we go back here first we need to use the post processing library which is under the unity engine dot rendering the post processing come here public post processing volume let's call it ppv we go down to the state updating if it's off we will check if ppv dot weight is greater than zero we're gonna reset it ppv dot weight minus equals time dot delta time and then the transition time in seconds let's say we wanted to to have the transition in two seconds so multiplied by two let's copy that when we aim if it's less than one we're gonna add so here if it's more than zero it will deduct until it reaches zero and then here is the exact opposite if it's less than one it will keep adding until it reaches one so save you will see a new field appeared here we're just gonna drag it and hit play okay so let's go to the aiming mode uh, to the dead eye mode all right that's that's pretty cool so here is your cowboy feature i hope you loved it and if you're interested in these kind of tutorials then subscribe to get more and more of these and let me know what next feature you want us to work on again this is omar balfaki thank you so much for watching and until then see ya